Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lessons, we have discussed different categories of forces including gravitational force, uptrust force, centripetal force and many other forces. In this lesson, we are going to describe other more forces like action and reaction force, nuclear force, tension force and then finally electrostatics force. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe action and reaction force and then categorize them either as a contact force or an uncontact force. Then describe nuclear force, tension force, and then finally electrostatic force. But here I want you to be very keen on the types of charges and how the two types of charges behave because we'll have positive charges and negative charges and how they behave when they are approached to each other. Now, what are action and reaction forces? Action and reaction forces, these are two equal forces acting in opposite direction, acting in opposite direction. So for you to have action and reaction, then it means the two forces must be equal and they must be acting in opposite direction. For example, if I have a table, this is our table, and then we have a block of wood, a block of wood resting on the table, block of wood resting on top of the table. Now, what happens? There are two forces here. We have the first force which presses the table downwards. And then since it's on top of the table, it means the table is also supporting this wood and it's placing it upwards. Now, the force which presses the table downward is called action. Action is the same as the weight of the block. This is the weight of the block and the weight is calculated as mass times the gravitational uh, field strength. Then the opposite force now which the table applies uh, to the wood or to the block of wood is called reaction force. Reaction force. And now what we have said action is the same as reaction the only thing which is different is that they are opposite they are acting opposite to each other to each other now what you have noticed from the diagram that you have drawn there for these two forces to be there the two bodies must be in contact the two bodies must be in contact for action and reaction to uh, to exist. So the two forces, we say they are contact uh, forces. Then, so we have another category of forces that we call the nuclear force. A nuclear force is the force that binds or brings together protons and neutrons in an atom or in a, an atomic nuclei. So for you to have a, a nuclear force, first you must have an atom. I hope you have discussed this in chemistry uh, on ECLIMU uh, lessons. And then this atom you were told from your chemistry it has two main parts. It has the smaller inner part, which we call the nuclear, and then it has the large out part, which we call the energy levels. We call it energy levels. Now, in this case, we are not going to be interested on the energy levels. However, the, we were told that nuclear has protons which are positively charged and it has neutrons which are neutral and then the energy levels you are told they have electrons now our interest is in the nuclear if now we extract this nuclear and redraw it down here a nuclear now alone which has uh, protons which are positively charged as protons which are positively charged like that protons which are positively charged and then it has neutrons which are neutral in nature 
neutrons they are neutral they don't have any charge there is a force which brings these protons and neutrons together so in between a neutron and a proton there is a strong force between a neutron and a proton there is a strong force like that uh, like that like that like that there's a force between the proton and a neutron in every proton and neutron there is a very strong force uh, between them now this is the force that we call the nuclear uh, force and this force is very strong in such a way that we are going to discuss later if you break these forces in what we call nuclear fission nuclear fission you are going to generate a lot of heat and sometimes if you recombine two nucleus from two atoms in what we call nuclear fusion you are going also to generate a lot of heat which we use in nuclear plants and many other applications like even in the cure of some diseases so as you can see from the case that we have discussed in the inside the nuclear these particles are close or are in contact with each other so that means also nuclear force is a contact a force we have another category of force which we call a tension force and tension force is a force which act on a stretched bodies now if you have let's say two people a and b and they are standing holding a rope like that is b holding a rope from this side and then this holding a rope from this side and then the first person a pulls the rope to this side then b pulls the rope to that side remember force is a pull or a push so in this case this rope will be under tension at the middle here at the middle here this rope will be under tension in such a way that if one if a person nap or snap that rope there or cut it using a, a sharp object this person a will fall to this side and then b will fall to the other side so the force which makes this rope to be stretched or to have some uh, force here which when you cut one will fall to the other side is the tension force tension force is experienced on springs also like you can see on the screen when you tie a mass uh, at one end of a spring and then you tie the spring on a ceiling or on a stand and cramp then the weight of this body will be stretching the spring downwards and then this cramp will also be pulling the spring upwards now the force which is experienced inside this spring at the middle in the opposite direction the one which pulls this weight upwards is what we call a tension force then if you have a thread also you tie it on a ceiling and then you tie a mass at the, the other end then this mass will be pulling down once that is weight then the thread will be stretched or will experience a tension force uh, upwards another thing that you can see this force for it to happen the two parts or the two ends must be in contact they must be holding like a and b they must be holding the same rope so it means this is uh, an example of a contact uh, force category of forces in this lesson is electrostatic forces and in electrostatic forces we are going to study uh, electrons which are not moving because the word electrostatics come from two words that is electro electro from the word electrons and then we have static which means not moving so in this topic we are going to study force electrons which are not moving now electrostatic force can be defined as the force of attraction or repulsion between electrically charged bodies we are going to see a categories of electrically charged bodies but it's also important to remember that we also looked at a force which is caused by attraction and repulsion that is magnetic force so don't confuse it with magnetic force this in this case we are going to talk about charges so this force is also a non-contact force non-contact force it means the two bodies electrically charged bodies don't have to be close together or don't have to touch each other for this force to happen it means it this force can exist even when these two bodies are very far away from each other 
and then there are two types of electrically charged bodies we have a positive positively charged bodies positive charged bodies in this case uh, we write it as a positive like this plus like that this positively charged body then we have negatively charged bodies negatively charged bodies which we write uh, like this now attraction because we have said this is a force of attraction or repulsion attraction only occur when you have opposite charges so for attraction to take place you have to have two opposite charges like positive and negative in this case they will attract or they will pull each other attract then repulsion repulsion takes place repulsion takes place takes place when you have uh same charges like example in this case if you have a uh, positive and positive in this case they will repel they will repel and if you have a uh, negative and negative they will also repel they will repel like that the reason why they attract when they are opposite and the reason why they repel when they are like charges we are going to discuss it in the ninth topic of form one so stay tuned so some of the situations where electrostatic force act include a plastic roller or a pen wrapped with a piece of dry cloth or air attract some piece of papers i hope you have ever tried this i remember i tried it in primary school if you have a table here and you have some pieces of papers these pieces of papers are either positive they are positive and negative at the same time they are neutral it means they have equal number of positives and equal number of negatives now if you wrap your ruler using a dry cloth or air the ruler becomes negatively charged it will have negatively charged then in this case if it's negatively charged and it come close to pieces of paper which are neutral they have both positive and negative the positive part of the particles the positive part of these pieces of paper will be attracted to the ruler remember we have said if the ruler is uh, negatively charged and it come close to a piece which is positively and negatively charged the positive side will be close to the negative uh, side of the ruler and in this case positive and negative will attract that's why pieces of papers are attracted we are going to discuss more in a topic called electrostatics another one is a wiped glass window rapidly attract the dust due to charges left on them during wiping whenever you are wiping a glass window let's say this is a glass window if you wipe it you are going to leave it with charges let's say it remains with negative charges now remember as a component of air that you discussed in chemistry it air as dust particles now the dust particles in air are also neutral positive and negative so when this dust particle come close to the window which has negative charges the positive from the dust and the negative from the window will attract so in this case there will be attraction that's why some pieces of dust are attracted to the window another scenario where uh, electrostatic takes place is a uh, polished shoes rapidly attract dust due to charges left on them during polishing now when you are brushing your shoes you are creating charges whenever you are wrapping two materials you are creating charges let's say you 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 wrap your shoes and then you leave uh, positive charges there and then when you step outside the room where there is dust where there is dust when you step where there is dust dust is positively and negatively charged it has two parts positive and negative uh, charges a dust is positive and negatively charged let's say it's here which is one side is negative the other one is positive so the negative part if this one is positively charged the negative part will be close 
to the positive part. So in this case, we have opposite charges. And in this case, there will be attraction which will take place. Attraction will take place. That's why uh, the shoe gains uh, dust very fast. Then the other one is an iron cloth produces a cracking sound and the sticks on the body when being removed. Whenever you are you wear an iron cloth and then you run or you do a vigorous activity, whenever you want to remove that an iron cloth, it will produce a cracking sound. Sometimes it even produces a flashes of light. So that is because of the charges which are caused when the iron cloth wraps with your body, they generate what you call static charges. And those static charges can even produce sound or even a light. So students, that is the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss the remaining categories of forces, that is action and reaction forces.